Both drag each other the anchorage at the moment. Far side. Water in the bilge. There's an engine. For those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Tayley last March after saving for years and after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, we ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, the lows, and absolutely everything in between. Because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. If you missed last week's vid, we let go of the lines of Bonaire. Okay, we're off. And made the 35 mile sail west to Curacao. The soul's spelling the yoga. Where we struggle with check-in. Immigration there has conveniently moved to the other side of the river two weeks ago. Became pretty familiar with the buses and saw some cool sights on the island. But alas, after a really dry few weeks, the heavens have opened. Right, it's just really started raining, which is actually amazing, because we haven't had heavy rain since well before Bonaire. And the boat got- Grenada, wasn't it? Yeah, Grenada. The boat got covered in that Saharan sand or Bonarian sand. And it's been salty since the crossing, so we haven't had enough water to rinse it all off. It's really nice to have some rain. But we're just looking around the anchorage. This anchorage is never dull. There's always something to see. There's like people running around shutting hatches, letting more chain out. <laughs> We're yeah. solid here. 50 meters out in... Oh, like five meters. Yeah, we've got a stupid amount of chain out. It's because we... The uh, markings on our chain have rubbed off. So kind of the only... We should have put a cable tie or something at the, every 10 meters, but it's only been recently that it's happened. But the only indicator now for uh, distance out is the chain connector that attaches the first 50 meters for the next 50 meters so it's kind of like a keep going and then if we see that surprise we've got 50 meters out <laughs> but we regret nothing we're not close to anyone and we're holding great so yeah yeah no regrets <laughs> it's all right bon dia i'd like some wood please some some wood no wood please one word uh ah like a tree. No, no, no. Wood. Oh. A few speakily lessons later. Hola. Puedo comprar Madeira, por favor? Ah, Madeira. Si, si. <laughs> Our goal is to travel to some of the remotest parts of the planet. But if we're going to do that, we're going to need to be able to speak the language. And that's why we're so grateful to Speakly for sponsoring today's video. The reason we like Speakly is because A, it's all on your phone, so it's really easy. But also, you can learn through so many different means. You can select daily whether you want to learn through writing or multiple choice or a combination of both. Creators of the app are actually confident that just 30 minutes a day, you will be pretty much fluent in three to four months. So, I mean, you really can't beat that. So one of the things that's unique about Speakly, which we love, is they also have music suggestions. So you can listen to a song in the language that you are learning. And this has unlocked a world of really fun songs on Spotify for us. <laughs> If you also want to try Speakly, there's a seven day free trial and 60% off your annual subscription if you click the link in our description box, which is a bargain. Definitely head over there if you want to learn a new language. I'm off to go and get in 100 litres. We fill up in Grenada, but we've been having more decent showers than we have been the rest of the Caribbean, so we've been using water a bit quicker. So I'm just going to fill up 100 litres here before we move on to Aruba on Monday. It's what is it today? It's only Wednesday today, so it should easily last the rest of the way. I've got about 50 litres in the tank still, but we haul out in exactly a week now in Aruba, so we don't need loads, but this should be our last water run of the Caribbean season. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Nice one. Thank you. Lovely 
so I've got to come down because the wind's strong but there's a boat dragging straight through the anchorage well the channel actually um, and we're going to try and go rally up some friends and try and rescue it but our outboard is three horsepower so we can't tow it but our friends have a bigger one so hopefully they can Hey guys! Hello, um, there's actually a boat dragging through the anchorage at the moment far side but we won't be able to do much with this i don't know if you guys would mind just give us a hand it's a very small boat it's the blue one out there it's you actually see it dragging right now it's side on oh, oh it's broken free then oh this thing's been sitting in for ages isn't it yeah look at it it's red. yeah but what can you do with it no idea but it's not safe you can use the tenor on it and try to keep it straight like that box. Yeah, I'm going to be clear yeah. all the friends are down there and see what, what happens. Like yeah. Okay, be safe. Yeah, it, it catches Maybe it's not clear from the clips, but it was blowing an absolute hooli at this point, and we had no idea what mooring this thing broke loose from. We couldn't leave it to either become a bumper car with other boats or go onto the rocks. So we were just going to have to tow it up the channel until we came up with a better plan. In a day's adventure. Is the rudder turning? Hold on tight! Luckily the chap in orange owned a mooring here, so we dragged it to that and went about untangling the jumble of lines so we could tie it to the buoy. They were all a bit crap. <laughs> So we ended up taking the main halyard down too, and using that as a secondary mooring line. Not ideal, but also far better than being on the rocks. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. So it's not going to be that that's failed. It's probably going to be this. Nothing will fail. Good vibes out there, Zach. <laughs> It'll be all right. But we're just there, so if we see it happen again, we'll rally up the troops from the anchor. The water in the bilge. There's an engine. We later found out that the owner of this boat was also out the country at the time, so it's just as well we came to its rescue. And at least it's attached now. Poor thing. After that rescue mission, it was time for a long overdue dip. Wow, it's very arty here. When we were exploring the fort last week, we could see people diving near the oil rig. And whilst we couldn't directly dive underneath it, there's nothing saying we couldn't dive around the perimeters of it. So let's see what's under there. Places our sailing strip takes us to that. Uh, <laughs> a few hundred meters from the oar rig was the wreck of a tugboat. When looking for some history on it, we found it had been purposely wrecked for the enjoyment of divers and snorkelers. And that's about it on the story. But aside from that, we saw a ton of yellow striped goatfish, trunk fish, and even a scorpion fish, which despite its chilled appearance, is actually one of the most venomous fish in the ocean. So we 
we just got out and that was actually really worth it. It was a really cool wreck, super shallow. It's only like four meters. My mask was that. definitely on too tight, so I feel a bit right now, yeah. but time to head back. Yep. Let's, Let's go. To so as you guys would have seen in Grenada, we added a new four stay chain plate and mast fitting for our second head sail that we're gonna be using hopefully in the not too distant future. But the next big thing that we need to get sorted is the actual sail. So we had a chat with Kemp Sails the other day and they sent us their measurement form for Genoa. So this is what it looks like. We've got a load of measurements we need to fill out here. I've done a few already, but I'm basically gonna spend the next however long measuring all this up writing down all the details and then by the time we end up leaving Aruba at the end of October we should have that all installed, all the running rigging still needs to be done and a few other bits in the mast but yeah hopefully in three or four months we'll be able to show you guys the finished project when we actually set sail again from Aruba so we're really excited about that but for now we're going to get a load of measurements and send them off to the team at Kemp. Do you know what the mast rake is? The mast rake? Um, what is the mast rake? Is it the, the width of the hole, all the, way, the groove all the way up? No, it's a good guess though. Could be that. No, it's the it's how swept it is. I was about to say I was actually about to say that, and then I just thought it'd be called swept. Yeah. How swept? Mast rake. So, so it's I like guess, I guess when you rake something, you kind of like yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, pull it back. I guess. I don't know. Interesting. How do we measure that? Um, we go. It's going to be really hard in wind. Who really knows exactly how we're going to do it? But we basically go to the top of the mast and we measure back. <laughs> Okay, so you see where we've got the, um, the, yeah, the shackle on there. And then I do from the very top of the track here. So you're gonna have to get it really tight, this thing. So that's going to the shackle, yeah? It is twisting around a bit, so just write it on there. I think I'm gonna minus like 10 centimeters. With that job ticked off, we headed to shore. However, on the way, we spotted this boat and got into quite the debate about whether it was a Colvick Victor or not. Sure, a Colvick. Like, the angle's the same. Oh, sure. That, yeah. Yeah, the chain plays similar design as well. It's not, it's not a Victor though, I don't think. No, but look I, at the three windows. It's like the same pilot house. Look at the look at the where the winch like Yeah. No, the back is the same as ours. No. Yeah it is, it's so much more rounded. It is. We're gonna have to just find them at some point and ask them. We'll be able to look it up. Anyway, we found the boat online and wanting to settle this debate once and for all, we dropped the chap a message. And hey, I guess it's a Colvick Victor 50 after all, the bigger version of our Tailey. He was going to be hauling out in the same yard as us in Aruba, so we were looking forward to, in his words, comparing the ladies. So it's Sunday evening at the moment, we're just heading into town to check out. Um, we've got to go to customs and then immigration, but we're rushed again by the buses. We just got the th half three bus, it was a bit late. We just got in at half four. And the next bus, which is the last bus on Sunday, which is goes back to where we're staying, is at half five. So yeah, we've got an hour to do all the formalities and walk to the building. So fingers crossed we'll get it done in time. All checked out. So much quicker. So much quicker in the evening when the city's a ghost town. Funny that, but there was no one in front of us for any of the checking process, and we yeah. know where we were going this time. 
Yeah, and we have to go across the river like 10 gazillion times. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna make the bus, it's five past five. Oh, so we don't nice. have to sprint back, which is nice because I'm not wearing the right shoes for running. <laughs> Named after me. It's crazy they leave the buses running whilst no one's on them. But this one's been running for about half an hour now. Just sick there. No aircon in it either, so it's not doing it because of that. to the Van de Tweel supermarket because we have a few Dutch flip-flops to spend still. <laughs> Hashtag stepdad says. Anyway, see what snacks we can find in the Van de Tweel. Happy? Curacao has been a sweet stopover on our way to Aruba, where we'll be hauling out for the rest of hurricane season. From the heart. Hope you enjoyed joining us this week. We never really say this, but if you have watched up until now and enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and clicking subscribe if you haven't already. It's really nice to see this video going down well.